Right, I won't bore you with all the measuring of all of the, the shims, but I will upload a quick screenshot um, of what I've found. But I'll just show how I've measured them because I had to learn, so I might as well pass on the information. So I bought a cheap um, micrometer and cheap because I have to reset it every time. So just let me uh, do that. So you just hook, hook in there and then just set it to, to zero. And then to measure your shim, You just put it in and then just gently run into it with this ratchet ball at the end. And as you can see, that is, I don't know, but basically each of those marks down here is, is 25. So that adds up to a hundred, hundred and one, and it was a one one one. So hundred, add the ten, add the one, one one one. So we're all good to go. That's how you measure them. And then I went and got these from Kelvin. They didn't have the ones for the inlet, unfortunately. But seeing as they were only a maximum of one thou out, I'm quite happy to leave those. It's the, the exhaust cam that was um, wildly out, so which is the one that needed the most, the 106. So let's just check. So I'm pretty sure with this, you meant to, every time you use it, because it's a cheap one, just run into it. You see, it's gone out of adjustment ever so slightly. But it's all right, all right for what I need. Make sure it's clean. And then run in. So you can see that is coming up at one, five, six, and a half. So it's maybe half a thou. But then if I move it about, maybe a bit of dirt on there it's coming at almost exactly so a spot on we'll get these fitted tonight and um, hopefully that solves all the problems and my friend David will have to buy me a beer well a non-alcoholic beer anyway because he said I won't be able to get it up for Monday I might be early but then again I might have just tempted fate and what else will I get from Kelverdon New Cellox, and of course, back of a gasket. So we're hot to trot. I've got some new brake pads on the way as well. Couldn't get any anti-roll bar bushes, so they will have to wait. But we'll get done eventually. Well, I've been filming this on my GoPro, but I've seen the footage is over an hour, which scares me from an editing perspective it will take me forever which means i might never do it now then i did indeed have an hour's worth of footage but um it was literally me just putting the shims in and bolting the cams down and i don't have time to edit it and you don't have time to watch it so you're about to, um, <laughs> I can't remember if I filmed it or not, and I haven't got this far into the footage, but yeah, mistakes were made, but I think we got away with it. But we got everything back in. All of the marks have gone back as they were. It's all lined up. It's now just turny turny, wait and see what happens. So I'm going to put my 
engine turning glove on. And see how we go. The only thing that is concerning me are these and then a point next to each other at TDC and he looks a little bit too far over. But I'm pretty confident that as long as I turn it gently we should be fine. So anyway, enough GoPro. I'm going to go back to the I'm going to go back to the phone. Right. Engine turn over. Let's see where we're at. Hmm. See, they aren't pointing towards each other, are they? They just aren't. Sensor. Obviously, one day, not on the compression strength. That's TDC. And I don't care what you say, those cams are not pointing at each other, are they? That one is. That one's pointing up in the air. I don't think that's right. I think that's wrong. The top dead centre, that valve's open. I've got this out by one dowel. That's what... I just know that's what the situation is. I'm not even going to check anything else. But on the good side, the engine did spin all the way round without touching anything. I'm about to say, why doesn't the engine have marks for top dead centre on the cams? I bet it does. I just be too ignorant and stupid to pay attention to where they are. Right, let's tie you on because we don't want to deal with this and then get slack and lose our timing. Anyway. No, we don't. Right, there we go. So, I believe that about there. That's where I think it should be. Is this recording? Right, I just did a load of work there without it recording, which is nice. But essentially, I turned the engine over and we weren't getting any contact, which was good but the two rear lobes weren't pointing towards each other. So I didn't think that I had this cam in the right position. So I've just unbolted it and I've turned it to where I think it should be. And now I am going to see if this dowel lines up. And it does, it lines.
guy. So hopefully a 10 will just slide in. And it won't. The 9 would still be within the back. does go in. It feels a little bit tight though. Now then, I don't know where I got up to with filming but um, Predictably, there's been a minor disaster. So I got everything back together. All, my plan worked brilliantly, but number four was a bit tight. So whipped the camshaft out, um, took a, um, a thou off the shim with a stone, put it back in. But whereas I had been cautious to keep the timing on that bit, I'd neglected the inlet camshaft because I hadn't removed it. Big mistake. When I was away, it slipped around and now I've lost all my timing. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's not a disaster. I've got my marks. I should just be able to time it up again. But, um, yeah, I should be done by now. So, no cooking tonight. I'll have to order pizza in. Right, I'll crack on. Miles says, Miles says, bloody hell, undo that, 5 sixteens, wind this out, and then I will get the cams so that on four they're just starting to touch. Wind it to top dead centre, hopefully nothing touches. Slap the chain on, God, job's a good one. Right. Both camshafts around, so now I'm hoping I can turn that bad boy down there around to top dead centre without anything getting all, all rubbed up. So, let's put my special glove on, see how we get on. So, probably can't see but that is the mark there it needs to go round so I'm going to line my ratchet up with it okay it's turning I think if it's got this far we'll be okay we've got to line it up can you see? Too dark. Gotta line it up with the timing mark, so I'll, I'll bring you back when I've done that. old girls are lined up so that should now be a case of cycling the tensioner so I can get enough chain around everything and then we should be hot trot. All right now Miles says exhaust cam first then inlet cam so I have released the tensioner I'm going to chop that off put the sprocket on see if I can get it done. All right I think he's done it. Um, yeah. I don't think anyone watching these videos will be coming to me for an engine rebuild. 
sadly that line of business is closed to me. That opportunity I had, gone. Mole grips on the camshafts, whatever next. Um, but yeah, look, they are absolutely in the right place. They're in the right place. I haven't checked it. I'm pretty sure. El Cranko. Let me get the right viewing angle. He's good too. He's good. So we're all good. We're all timed up. I'm just going to put the camshaft bolts in and then give her a couple of spans. And then as long as there's no well, as long as you don't hear any swearing emanating from Lincolnshire, you'll know we're good. Oh. If you didn't make mistakes, you wouldn't learn anything. Right. Just checking these are. Talked to you. 25. Pins feet. Always remember to slacken your torque wrench off. Or you'll brick it. Um, scores on the doors, George doors. Scores on the boards, George doors. That's how it was looking like. Now with my dress covered up. So, exhaust, 11, 10, 10, 10. Beautiful. Beautiful. Inlet stayed exactly the same, apart from the... Number four, inlet valve has opened up to nine. I checked that three times. It was eight. And number six was also eight, I think. But I don't know, I haven't changed them. They they haven't been altered. So why they're different, I don't know. Cams talked up as per spec. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe my super clean engine operation has let something in there who knows anyway so um next job is just to put the cover back on um and then start it up but seeing as it's nine o'clock probably wait till tomorrow to do that and um yeah i'll probably just put the cork gasket on gently and then Put it on properly um, once I haven't blown the engine up but I've done several laps several laps several rotations nothing's touching I'm pretty happy with it all um, in retrospect I wouldn't have bothered trying to keep the timing I would have just marked up the cams for where TDC is marked up the crank like I did and then just let them all go to hell because um, that's what ended up happening and it was literally a two or three minute job to fix it took the tensioner out just set it, it was fine, easy um, yeah, cams haven't snapped touch wood um, nothing's gone wrong it's all good so uh, yeah, hopefully I start it up and it doesn't sound like a bag of nails but one will have to wait to find out and that will be Tomorrow. Well, I don't know what's happened to the um, manufacturers of cork gaskets in the last few months, but this is sh this is by far and away the worst one I've had. Oh God, bloody awful! I mean, it just come out of a board packaging, and it's. Not even laying flat, it's... God, this is shite. Hmm. Do I have a Cometic one somewhere? Did I get one in that gasket set I bought? If I did, where would I have put it? Oh. Hmm. Okay, well, I mean, I've got that, so it will do for testing purposes. And um, 
yeah, I'm going to tidy up the garage, get it ready to go tomorrow, and uh, I will join you and all. Right, moment of truth. I've turned it over loads of times. Got this. It's not on properly, but I'll do that once the engine has proved that it can turn over and not be um, not shatter itself to pieces. Um, yeah. Right, so neutral. Let's see how we go. Neutral, turn it over, fingers crossed. Give it some choke. Ooh. There is a noise coming from it. Mm, hang on, I'm going to investigate. Right, noise is gone. I unplugged the crank sensor. So I assume it's just me being sensitive and it's just the... Um... Why does it always disappear when I just unplug it? Oh, it goes on an adventure somewhere. Um, I think it's just me being paranoid. It's just the spark plugs clicking right that's plugged back in I put it down on the floor For some reason I felt uncomfortable about starting it while it was jacked up so give it some choke neutral off we go Oh, I've just realised why it's not starting. Has anyone spotted it? Have you? Have you spotted what the problem could be? How about now? <laughs> yeah. Bloody phone never stops ringing. Yeah, I, I haven't put the spark plugs back on. That would be why it's not going. And that would be why I could hear clicking. Right, this one's number one. That would be why I could hear clicking, which I don't usually hear. Number two, which must mean this one is good old boy number three. Right. Now we have all of these on. We might stand a chance of um, getting her to start. Right, no throttle because there'll be loads of bloody fuel in there. Fuel pump on. Still a little bit tappy, but a lot better than it was. And it's cold. Oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. Well, it's all working, but I'm getting a bit of a 
a tapping noise from the top end and I mean I'm, I'm not sure there's a huge amount that could be done because as soon as it comes off idle sounds great um, sounds beautiful really so I am electing not to take it all apart I'm going to put the cover back on and just take it out for five minutes get some proper heat in it see what it's like pretty pleased with that right everything seems to have calmed down beautifully after a quick once around the block got to take this off and seal it properly so it's pissing oil out Ugh. hate these things but have to do that and then it's um it's good to go just got to do a gearbox oil diff oil check and then I'm good to go to Blyton on Monday. So all good. And I am now at least one beer in credit with my friend David. Pig. Now, I do love my car dearly, but God, the amount of oil comes out of this damn thing. The bell housing. It's leaking there where the bell housing connects to the gearbox. Fortunately, the clutch is bone dry. Um, and it's leaking out of somewhere at the top, maybe out of that fill plug, even though it shouldn't. I'm sure it's leaking out the speedo cable drive as well. It's leaking out the front main seal, the half moon. It's, oh, it's everywhere. It's just everywhere. You, you just don't know where to move for oil. And I mean, I clean this fairly regularly. Look, it's just drips. Fucking thing. This is the one bit that really disheartens me about this car. Diff doesn't leak. Coolant doesn't leak. Gearbox oil and engine oil. Nah, don't want that, sir. I'm going to chuck that right out. But, as you'd have seen, tapping noises have gone. Um, I'm just checking the oil levels. And then I'm going to... Yeah, well, it's going to go on track on Blyton. And then, hopefully make it to Landau and then Cadwell later in the month so we're all good um, I'm just under here to clean up and to paint that bit where I try to weld so it doesn't rust into oblivion over and out love you lots bye